And he is a happiness engineer at Automatic by Day, where he helps business owners work all of the kinks out of their WooCommerce stores. If working with WordPress all day wasn't enough, he spends more time each week recording his WordPress podcast called Your Website Engineer at HTTP yourwebsiteengineer.com. He enjoys helping people understand and use WordPress to its fullest capacity and spends time tinkering with code. When he's not in front of the computer, which is rare, he enjoys spending time crossfitting, reading, and traveling. He lives in Dayton, Ohio with his wife, 3.5-year-old daughter, and 9-month-old son. Thank you so much, and give a hand to Justin. All right. Hello. Does this work? Can you hear me? Hear me. I try not to shout the whole time, but I want to keep some energy going because it's late in the day and we've all just had another round of snacks. Um, so we're going to get started and we're going to talk about WooCommerce. Yes, I am um, all the way from Dayton. Um, I'm excited to be here with you because one of my goals this year was to teach more people about WooCommerce. And I help people every single day, well, every day that I work, which isn't every day, but every single day that I work, I help them, like you said, work out the kinks, the bugs. There's lots of things with WooCommerce that makes it a very powerful platform, but there's lots of things that make it a tricky platform and a platform that can run into some issues. So we're going to talk through some of those. So it, just a show of hands, does anybody have a store already connected to their website? Handful of people? Handful of people? Perfect. Um, one of the questions earlier um, in one of the earlier sessions was about um, how do you plan on making money with your website? Well, you know what? A store is a great way to make money because you sell things and you make money. Like that's a great, <laughs> great thing. So um, today we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about WooCommerce. I'm going to um, try to show you as many settings as we can. You've got an hour and there's about 13 million settings. And so it's going to take us a little while to dig through all of them. But in, it, by the time we're all said and done, like the goal is that you you should be able to just add WooCommerce to your current website and you can start the process of selling things. Selling things with WooCommerce or any of the digital platforms that are out there. Um, specifically though, we're going to spend it on WooCommerce because that's what I know. Um, is It's awesome because you have the ability to, to sell really anything. Anything you could think of, like you can sell with WooCommerce. Like do you want to... Um, Maybe you have a, a consulting business and you are a, I don't know, a roofer and you want to like send, send your roofing quotes and estimates through WooCommerce and people can pay you online instead of writing archaic checks. Um, so that's something that you can do. You can, um, you can sell digital ebooks. You can, you can set it up so you can sell things and then you have upsells. So maybe if they bought product A, you could say on, on um, checking out, you know, like Amazon does, like, oh, well, so and so looked at this. So they probably bought this too. Like you can do all of that stuff with WooCommerce. And a lot of this, you can do with WooCommerce right out of the box. Um, as much as I'm going to show you today is going to be all like free WooCommerce stuff, but we have um, 350 to 400 premium extensions that can extend your site even more. So if you need some sp sort of special payment gateway because you're building a, a site for somebody that is in um, Nigeria, like you need a special payment gateway there because they don't take PayPal or Stripe or any of those. So um, you may have to pay for um, premium gateways and stuff like that. So that's kind of in a nutshell um, where we're going to go. We're going to start with a, a demo site. I, I built this very nice site um, for WordCamp. Oh, wait, let me refresh. I have a nice menu, so you can see all, all my gibberish here. But um, basically, this is a site, and, and the thought process was that WooCommerce can be added to any website. It can be added to any website, even with any theme that you currently have. Now, some of the styling and things may not look perfect right away, but those can all be fixed, and they can all be merged together, so your site looks like, or your WooCommerce site looks exactly like your site. I've seen it in the past that some people have like their regular website or maybe they have their website, uh, you know, a static website and then they go to store.websitenomain.com and have a store listed there. Like that's perfectly fine. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to manage your website all in one place. So it's easier, you know, like if, you're, if you have one WordPress site for your, your business, um, like you're just your website and then you have one for your WooCommerce store, like then you've got to do updates twice and you've got to do security things twice and then you have to log in twice and it's a real pain in the rear. So the, the, the thought process is just add WooCommerce to your website and you're done. Well, you're not done. You have to start setting it up and configuring and all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the next hour we'll show you how long that takes. Um, but that's what we're going to do and that's how we're going to get started. So 
I have, um, we're just on the dashboard, we're going to just go to um, the plugin section and, and do and, and add new. Um, I have one just in case the internet goes down, I have it saved to my computer, but I'm pretty sure that it is. Um, right here, and it's WooCommerce. It's got one million, more than one million installs. Like, there's tons of people using WooCommerce. The other great part about WooCommerce is like it is fully extensible uh, or extendable, or you could do a lot with it. I don't know. Um, if you think about like, if you think about Shopify, you know, Shopify is like one of WooCommerce's big competitors. And yes, they have a nice, elegant interface. They have some really cool things that they can do with the stone selling with their store. But it's like their platform. Like, if they control the entire experience. Like, if you need a new X, like you have to contact like they're developers and they have to think it's worthy to add to every Shopify store across the entire world, which is very unlikely. With WooCommerce, if it's something that maybe you have a very specific need, then uh, an additional plugin, you could hire a WordPress developer and they could add that functionality right there for it. Maybe sometimes the plugin's already there, you can just go out and buy a plugin and it can do exactly what you want. So we're going to go ahead and activate this. And it's going to start walking us through the process. This is the coolest part. Uh, WooCommerce didn't have this a few years ago, uh, which it made it hard to set up, but this is a very simple way to get started with WooCommerce. So it kind of removes the dashboard and lets you kind of forget about WordPress for a minute, and it just goes through the steps of setting up our WooCommerce site. So we want to say that our store is based here in um, the United States, and we can even pick um, New Mexico. It's here in the list. We can say where our store is. Um, this information is really good and it will be used later, like if you, if you have um, shipping rates generated or um, sales tax and stuff like that. We're not going to put an address in for right now, but um, we basically want to say what currency we use. So there's tons and tons of currencies. And then you want to say what you're planning on selling. And so you can say, I want to sell physical and digital goods. I want to do physical, only physical. I want to do digital only. And most of the time you just leave it set as physical and digital because you never know what you might offer. Like you may want to sell these widgets and sell them on your store or you might want to sell like some sort of consulting package or you know whatever. Like again it's it's up to your imagination of what you can sell. Well apparently we have to we have to add the address here. How about 123 Main Street? Is that a thing in New Mexico? What's Albur I know. I know. You know how many times I had to look this up to try to spell it? Q U is that close? Oh, there's a J. Yes? Did I get it? Postal code. Eight, seven, one, oh, two. On Main Street, one, two, three Main Street, wherever that is. Okay, so I should have just put Ohio because that's way faster than writing Albuquerque. <laughs> but um, our next thing is we've got options now for what kind of payment method do we want. And these are just the ones that are built in with WooCommerce. Like I said, there's a ton of other ones out there. If you have a brick and mortar store and you're already using Authorize.net or Square or you know some sort of other payment provider that you already interface with, we have extensions to interface your website with that as well. So you don't have to say like, oh, my website's going take PayPal payments, but then my w other store takes authorized.net payments and now I somehow have to conf consolidate and configure all this, you know, like you don't have to do that. Like we have the, the extensions to do that. So by, by far, uh, Stripe is one of the most popular ones. Um, PayPal is another one that you can add. These are just basically turning them on um, in the settings in the dashboard, and I'll show you this in just a second. But it just helps us to kind of get through and get set up and get going. Another thing that you probably want to do is when you are starting a WooCommerce store, and this um, it doesn't make any sense to have these on a real store for the most part in the digital age of 2017. Like you don't really want to sell things on your e-commerce store and then wait for a check to come so you can sell, you know, so you can actually ship things because um, that does, does doesn't make sense. It would just kind of be a pain. But if you do a check payment, if you turn this on, that is the best way to test WooCommerce to make sure it's working. Um, because you can, uh, so you can say, oh, I'm going to buy this $1,000 product, and then I'll send them a check, wink, wink, and then hit submit, and then the, they'll s start seeing the emails that says, okay, you've ordered this, and then you'll get an email, and you make sure all the emails are working right inside of WooCommerce, and then as an admin, you can set the order to uh, completed, like, yes, I've got it, and make sure all the rest of the emails go out right. So this is always a great one to do a lot of testing, because you don't actually have to use your own money to do it. You know, when you're using Stripe, and you're checking for PayPal to make sure those work, like you'll want to have an actual product that's a dollar or uh, 50 cents or something so you can test it to make sure the payment gateway works but for anything else it's just a big hassle to 
uh, pay yourself and then refund yourself and pay yourself and refund yourself. It just gets annoying. So we're going to turn on the check payments right now because I'll, I'll show you how that works and that just will make it easier for testing. Next we want to do is we want to, uh, how are we going to ship our products? Now if we had a, if we would have selected earlier just digital products, this whole page wouldn't be here because there's no need to set up shipping if you're not actually sending things through the mail. Um, there's lots of different options that you can do this. Um, the one that's going to be, that's going to be built in here is called WooCommerce Services and uh, we'll, we'll click this and that's with the live rates. So with with WooCommerce services, what happens is it basically will take the user's information. When they plug it in, they say where their, their, their postal code is. They'll say what country they live in. They're going to take, it's going to take the product, how much, of, how big the product is. And it's going to say maybe they bought two of these widgets and this other thing. And it's going to, WooCommerce is going to package it into a box. It knows what box sizes that you typically ship things with. And then it's going to take the size and the weight of the box. And it's going to use fancy API calls to go to USPS.com and see like, oh, okay, it's going to cost actually this much money to, to send this package. So the user that's buying things from your website can actually get a specific rate, like $7.20 for a flat rate box, and they'll pay that, and then you can pay, then you'll have to pay UPS or whatever, so, uh, or USPS. So that's, we'll turn that on, and I will show you how that works in just a little bit. They also have um, the settings here to say how, how you want to measure, measure your weights. If you're in a different country, you know, you may want to do kilograms or grams or pounds, like depending on how big your products are, maybe everything's in pounds instead of ounces or whatnot. And then for dimensions, like if you're selling gigantic things, you can measure them in yards. That would be kind of silly for most things, but um, that's that. Um, another thing that's built in, if you want to, you can do automated taxes. So taxes is one of those things that it's just like, oh, it's a big pain and um, uh, just to, to do all of the setup of taxes, we've built in this new system in this WooCommerce services plugin that will uh, automatically pull in the tax rates for your areas. So in general, when you, buy, when you sell things online, you only have to charge tax for the state that your business is located in. And so with this WooCommerce services, it's smart enough to know that. So that's one of the things. I've seen people set up, like they've had tax charts that are like 370 lines long because they have specific, they've lined out every zip code in the entire state um, specifying the exact rates. So WooCommerce services with that, you don't have to do that. We'll turn that on to just for the fun of it. And then uh, it's going to ask us to activate Jetpack. Some of these features you need Jetpack, and that's going to be those live rates. It's going to be those, those live tax settings. And so you need Jetpack to do, which I don't know if that'll actually work on a development site here, but we will find out. Sorry, we can't connect. It's because I'm <laughs> offline here. But uh, that's, that's like the setup to get started with WooCommerce. You kind of walk through the process, and now we officially have a store. Um, we've got an email address here that I can get more updates if I wanted to. And then the first thing we can do is create a product. Um, I'll click on this just to show you, but I want to go through some of the settings first. So you'll see these new two areas right here. We don't need all this. We'll see these two new areas. We've got WooCommerce and we've got products. And where we're going to spend a little bit of time first is in the WooCommerce settings. And that's where we're going to see all of the, well, this big dialog box saying that I don't have Jetpack, um, but it's, that's not a big deal. Um, so we see the store address. This is all the information that we added earlier. We also have the ability in these general options. So um, you'll see these tabs across the top. First, let's get, can I get rid of that? I guess not. Um, across the top here, this is where all the like plugins will add their settings. So right now, you see general products, tax, shipping, checkout, accounts, email, and API. Those are all ones that are built in. If we would, if we wanted to sell like a subscription site, there'd be like WooCommerce subscriptions. That would be a tab there. And I've seen websites that have you know 30 tabs across the top because they've got a lot of extensions that are doing a lot of things. So we're going to look at the general settings. We have the store address right there, and this is an, uh, in under the general options. You have the ability to set where you want to sell things. Like, do you only want to sell to people in the United States? Do you only want to sell to people in New Mexico? Do you only want to sell to people in this zip code of 87102? Like you can specify all of those things. That way you don't have to, you know, open up your, um, open up WooCommerce and see that you got a, a, somebody wants you to send this giant widget that's going to cost a thousand dollars. They want you to send it to Mexico. Like you don't have to sell it to places that you don't want to deal with the headaches and hassle of shipping. So that's one of the things you can do in here. Um, you could also set your currency. And so if you're setting up a website for somebody that's in a different country, you can set up that currency as well, whether that be euros or pounds or whatever. That can all be set here in the general store options. Excuse me. Yeah. If you restricted it to only New Mexico, for uh -huh. example, to sell to, 
somebody from Arizona um, comes to your site, are they going to just not see the product? Or uh, that's a great question. You're not going to be able to buy it, but um, you're going to be teased that you might. Right. Have so the question is, what happens if you only sign to New Mexico? What if somebody from Arizona comes and tries to buy something? What happens? They, they're they actually going to be able to work through the whole process of going through the store. They'll see the products. They can add to their cart. And then when they add, the in the checkout page, it asks for their zip code. And it's going to say, no shipping available to this state. So that's one of the things, like you can always put a notice like on your site that says we only ship to New Mexico. Um, there's uh, lots of things that you can do to, to if you're going to restrict it that much. But th that's another one of those, our 50 is missing stories, which being from Ohio, you get. Yeah. being from New Mexico. Okay, I did not get it, but <laughs> we'll continue on. <laughs> Under the, under the product section, this gives us some settings of how to specify and what the settings are for our specific product. So we've got the pounds and the inches like we set up before. And then we have the ability to add um, it, reviews. So if we want to allow people to come and leave reviews for our products, we can, we can turn those on and off. We can show a verified owner label for customer reviews like if we wanted to be able to do that. Um, and we can do star ratings on products and all kinds of things. So those are all in the general product settings. Then the display settings, and I'm just walking through these menus real quick here, and then we'll, we'll do some more fun stuff. But um, basically, it's the first thing is saying, where do you want your shop to be? So you have to set up a page. Like WooCommerce goes in, and it actually it created this page called Shop for me, and then it automatically selected it, because it knows that that's probably what I want to do. But So now if I go to like the website.com slash shop, it's going to show me all the products in the store, if I had any. And then just some more settings on how you want your page to display, whether you want to show all products, or if you want your products on your store page to be in, uh, grouped in categories. So if you go to your store page, it's going to say like um, product or category A, category B, category C, and then you have to click on the categories and then it shows all the products underneath those. So just a few different things. And then the product images, those are all just about like um, how big of a rendered of, of an image do you want WooCommerce to, or WordPress to show when it comes to uh, your product pages. What's the implication of the Ajax option? Um, What's the implication of the Ajax? Um, basically, what that is is when you, um, if you click the button, it's going to stay on that same page instead of doing a full page refresh. When you, when you, within WooCommerce, if you add, if you click the Add to Cart button, it normally just refreshes that page and then it adds a little link across the top that says View Cart, or like if you're ready to check out View Cart or continue shopping. If you if you uncheck that, then it's going to be a full page refresh, which you don't want. I don't know. You can want it. It's it just. It looks slicker with, with the Ajax. Um, the, the inventory is basically if you have stock, like some, some people have like 30 widgets that they're selling. And then once they're gone, like I can't sell anymore until I get more in. Other people have like, if you're selling cakes online or something, like you can always make more cakes. Like you don't really have, in, well, to an extent. Like if somebody buys a million cakes, then I don't know what happened then. But um, if you have stock management, what this is is that you'll hold stock for 60 minutes is what the default is. So that means somebody can come to your store on your site and they can put an item in their cart and it'll save it for 60 minutes to their user session before it pops it out of so it'll take it out of inventory for 60 minutes if they don't do anything with the 60 minutes then it puts it back into inventory and then if they refresh that page or they try to add it later and inventory's out they can't get it so that's that's what that's all about and if you wanted to do that have that a little lower of a stock you know if you have a real popular site and you you know don't want people holding on to things for that long then you can set that down to 5 or 10 or 15 minutes or whatever you also have the ability to set threshold for stock, um, and there's some notifications that, will, that you can display if you wanted to. You can say down here, you can say like, oh, there's 12 left in stock, and you can always show that, or you can say there's only two remaining, so get that urgency so people will buy things. So once there's the low th stock threshold, you can do some things like you can have emails triggered to you, or if you're out of stock, you can have e emails triggered to you or whatnot. So you can do all kinds of things with the inventory. And then on the last tab under the products is the downloadable sections. And this basically just tells you how to download things. We normally keep it at forced downloads. And then if you wanted um, somebody to actually be logged into the site so they have a, an account with your, maybe, I don't know, like some people don't like, they sell an ebook, but they only want somebody that is able to log into the site to be able to download it. It's an extra step in, in somebody's sharing it online with their social followers or whatnot. But you know, once they've downloaded it, then they can share it with anybody. So it's like one extra step, but you make them log into your website so they can download it first. It's just an option that you can do there. So that's for downloadable products only.
All right, next is tax settings. And these, I'm not going to go through all of these because they're super, super boring because taxes are boring. But you have the option on this page to either say the prices are included with tax or the prices are excluded with tax. So if you say it's included with tax, then it, t it knows where the person lives and it knows the tax rate in that, in that place and it takes the subtotal and then adds it. So like every visitor, if they're in a different tax bracket, will see different prices on your website, if, which makes it really confusing and really complicated. And then there's rounding issues and all kinds of things. So the, the easiest way to do this is just say, no tax is included, you know, everything is without tax and then tax is calculated at the end. And then that's how most stores work. Like most of the time, you're not, you're, you're not going to the gap and buying something from the gap and think, oh, like that, that's a subtotal. Like that's the subtotal. Then you get to add the tax on with the shipping and all that kind of stuff at the end. So that's what that is all about. Then if you wanted to use your standard rates, Again, if we were using the WooCommerce services with Jetpack, I'll show you this with a different site here in a little bit, but um, that would auto-populate. If you don't want to use that, then you have to populate them yourself. And so you basically would say US state code of NM, and then if you wanted to just do all of the state, like if you wanted the entire state of New Mexico to pay the exact same tax, you would put in 6.5 or I don't know what the tax is here. It's probably 10 or something. I don't know. Um, but if you wanted to restrict that down by zip codes or cities, you could do that as well. So if you wanted to say like everything that's, you know, 81, whatever, um, or 87 or whatever you guys said, um, you could restrict that to certain geographical cities or whatever. So taxes are com complicated and you can have hundreds and hundreds of lines of rows in this section. So now can you, import in you can import an Excel spreadsheet, yes. So which would be... You can probably find like spreadsheets online and just import them, which makes it really nice. You can also set up so you have the standard rates and then you have reduced rates and you have zero rates. So those are three tabs across the top. And how those work out is like some country or some, some states, I know that it's really weird in New York. We've got some weird cases like New York clothing is taxed higher than like other goods. And so if that's the case, like you can set different tax zones or you can have each product can have its own tax category, I guess. And so it knows that it's a, a shirt. And so that's going to get taxed at 10%. But this digital download is taxed at 0%. And this, e or this, uh, this book is taxed at 5% or something. So you can have all of those different tax rates set on each of those different individual things. And then WooCommerce will do all the calculations. And then it'll, it'll serve it up as one tax rate at the end. So there's all kinds of confusing tax things going on. Any questions about taxes? Okay, go. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, but all you know, you have to talk with your tax provider, person, guy, like lady. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know all the implications of actually selling and the reporting back with sales tax and all that kind of stuff. Like, you have to, as a business owner, like you have to figure that out <laughs> because I'm not, and I don't know. The next most complicated part about WooCommerce is shipping and shipping zones. And I've seen people, they, they come up with the most ridiculous things. Like, I don't know why people want to ship things in different order. Like, they're like, oh, if they buy one t-shirt, it's $5 shipping, but the second t-shirt's $2.50, and every third t-shirt after that, it's like 13 cents. Like, that's the most ridiculous thing. And it, it's like, okay, well, that's going to take a lot of extra programming. Like, why don't we just make it a little bit easier? Or, you know, it makes a little bit more sense. But first... Before we can do shipping, we have to set up these shipping zones. So you see right now we have a shipping zone of United States, and then we have a shipping zone of locations not covered under your other zones. So what does this mean? The shipping zones are geographical regions across the United States where you can offer your shipping to things. So we can, if we wanted to, like one of the best examples is, okay, we're in New Mexico. Maybe we have a store and we want people to have local pickup. Maybe you, know, maybe you sell some big widget that's you know, something that's big. It would cost a lot to ship, but if somebody lives in the, in the general vicinity, they could drive and pick it up for free. You know, that's a, a good case. So what you would do is you have to create a, a shipping zone, and we would call it like New Mexico five-county region or something. We could call it like the, the names over here, the zone names, these are arbitrary. They, you, just, you label them so you know what, what you're talking about what zone you're th we're thinking through. So we would say New Mexico, local zone. And then what we would do is we would put the maybe five to 10 zip codes that's right around where my store is, okay? You put whatever the numbers are, I don't even, I don't know. But we'd have that option and then we could add a shipping method of local shipping so people could see local shipping on their checkout. We want somebody, like if I'm buying something from your store here in New Mexico, in Ohio, I don't wanna see the option for local shipping. <laughs> Because I'm not going to come and pick up, you know, when you can ship it to my house, like 
hundreds of thousands of uh, thousands of miles away. So what this is is it basically gives us geographical regions so we can really specify what we want um, and what options we have. I have some people that, that come and say that if we live in Ohio, but we only want to use UP or USPS, the post office is much cheaper when we ship to the five states around the state of Ohio. But everywhere else we want to ship UPS. Okay, so I would go in here and I would create, let's just do that as an example. I would add a new shipping zone and I would call this one, um, I would call this zone like USPS five state, just so we know. And we could do zone regions, so I will say Ohio. I don't know the states around here, so I'm gonna do Ohio, Indiana, oops, is next to me, uh, Kentucky, no making fun of my typing. You guys are laughing, Michigan, <laughs> Michigan. What's the state on the other side? Pennsylvania. There we go. So I'm saying that I want to only ship USPS to this range, or I can offer free shipping to this range if I wanted to. And uh, I probably just do free shipping because that's already built in. Uh, and we'll just say we'll give free shipping there, and we will also give local pickup to the people that are in the five state region. So I'll just say, instead of USPS, because we don't have that plugin installed, we'll say five state region. So I'll show you this in a second, but then that will give us the opportunity when we are checking out, when somebody puts in a, either a postal code or a, the state for, either, for those five states, it will show them these two options, either free shipping or local pickup. And we can configure free shipping if we wanted to. This is built in with WooCommerce. We can say that it's free shipping if they spend $50 or more or $100 or more, or it's free shipping if they have a free shipping coupon or if they have hit a minimum threshold um, or they have a minimum threshold and a coupon. You, you can set all of that up as well. And the local pickup doesn't really have any options. You can charge them if you want to. Like It's going to be $10 to come pick up at a warehouse because it's an incon inconvenience for us. And then the other option is uh, flat rate. Flat rate's kind of cool because you can charge, obviously, a flat rate. Um, but you also have the ability, um, well, I thought you did. I thought you had the ability to go in. OK, maybe not. We'll call it 10. Oh, you do. It's right here. So when you hover over this, they, WooCommerce has a lot of like hidden little things. And you guys can't read this, probably, because it's way too small. But if you want to do a flat rate based on the number of items, so that t-shirt example we said earlier, you could say, I want to charge $10 per t-shirt to ship. So I could say $10, and then if you put, um, it's actually, it's $10 times, and then QTY. QTY. Again, if you hover over this thing, it shows right here, you can do quantity for the number of items, you can do a cost for the total number of items, or you could do a percentage. So if you wanted to say, like, I want shipping to be 10% the total cost, and they spend $100, shipping's gonna be $10. Like, you can set that up if you want. Or you can do, you know, a combination of other things. It's not super, super powerful. Like, there's other extensions that you can get very fine-tuned and do some really cool, like, refined things. But that's, in general, like, how you set up your shipping settings. If we had the, if we had installed Jetpack with the WooCommerce services thing, we would have seen an option to add um, USPS shipping options there. And then there's a whole bunch of settings that go through that. I'll get to that in a little bit if we still have time. So that's shipping. So we set up our taxes. We set up our shipping. Now we got to set up, whoops, let's, let's save this. That would be a good thing to do, right? It says it's saved. OK. Well, if it's not saved, well, we won't have any shipping op options. The next thing is uh, the checkout. And so this is the checkout process where we, earlier when we said we wanted to do Stripe, we wanted to do PayPal, and we wanted to do the, the checks. And this also is the area where you say enable coupons or allow coupons to work, process multiple coupons if possible. And then you, this is another place where you say you want guest checkout. If you, don't, if you have that box that says enable guest checkout unchecked, then as, as somebody's going through the checkout process, they're going to have to add a password. And that's going to create an account for them. And then they'll have to log in um, to you know, whatever so they can manage your account. If you do enable guest account, then people can just check out. And then they don't have to have an account on your website. 
And then you probably always want to have the force secure checkout um, just because we want to make sure that we're always sending all these credit card details through our website through a secure protocol. Um, the cool part about how WooCommerce works and even like the Stripe payment gateway and some of these other ones is none of the credit card details are actually stored on your WooCommerce site. So hacking your site is like and even on like WooCommerce.com where we process all the, the extensions and whatnot, like we have no access to any of that data. So someone's like, oh, I use the card that ends in 4561, or you know, 4561. Um, we can't even see that. It sends a special transaction key from your WooCommerce site to Stripe, and then Stripe sends something back and it knows that the payment has went through. So all the details gets, get, gets right through, it goes right to Stripe or PayPal or whatever. So that's that. Those are the payment gateways down at the bottom, and it shows which ones we have enabled. And then since these ones are enabled, we have to go in and actually set them up. We're not going to have time to do all this, but just in general, here's, here's what it looks like. You just, you go, you, within, um, within Stripe, for example, this is the one I clicked on, you have to have a Stripe account. And when you go set up a Stripe account, then it gives you these login or these publishable keys and secret keys. And they give you test ones, and they give you real live ones. So the test ones will allow you to actually make purchases with a test card and the transactions will look like they go through, but they don't actually charge anything. And then you have to, set, you have to unnate like this, and then you have to put in the live key codes. And then you, that way, payments will actually start to go through. So that's a little bit along, along those lines. It's kind of a, a bo the boring part, like, well, you need money, but you need this part to work to make sure that it all, all, all checks out. Um, we'll, s we'll leave, that's okay. Accounts, um, this, this is an area that's mainly set up for folks that have a, an account on your website. So if you're selling some sort of subscription or membership or a digital download or people sign up when they, and through the checkout process, they create an account on your website, then they have to have a place to go to find all this information. So it's the My Dash Account page. By default is what WooCommerce sets up. And it allows people to, if they go to the My Account page, if they're not signed in, it shows them they can sign in or they can sign up. They have the ability to, um, to go and look at their past downloads. They can see all kinds of information. I can show you that on the front end as well. So all kinds of stuff in the My Accounts area. Emails, the, another boring part of WooCommerce is you have to send emails when things happen. And here's where all the settings go. Like um, when you get a new order, a canceled order, a failed order, those come to the store owner, which makes sense. Like those are transactional emails that something has happened on your store. You get those emails. And then all the rest of them go to the customer. So whether the order is on hold or it's processing or completed, it's refunded, all that kind of stuff, those go to the customer. One of the biggest sticking points in this is like when you're testing this, if you're testing this on a local environment, most of the time those emails won't fire just because your local environment, like your, your local in installation of WordPress doesn't have a mail server provider like set up. And even some WordPress hosts don't have the ability to send email out. So when you get to this point, when, you, when you're doing some tests and you're figuring out, okay, what's going on here, you buy something but you never get any emails one way or the other when you're testing or when you're the store owner, then most likely there's something going on within your server itself. You may need an extra plugin. There's plugins out there. They're called um, um, SMTP. They're SMTP plugins, and they allow you to hook in with your Gmail account or other web server, and it allows you it allows WooCommerce to actually send data via email. So some of the it's like um, I've got a bunch of test sites on Pressable. Some of the other like big name companies have a mail server, and it's just going to work. But if those emails don't to be going out for some reason, then that's the first thing to look at. There's also a plugin called Email Log um, that you can install, and it's going to take a log and a record of every mail message that's trying to be sent from WordPress. So that's something to look at as well. Um, you can also try like the lost password reset within WordPress. Like if that email doesn't send, then most likely it's not a WooCommerce issue. It's an issue with your web host and something along those lines. So that is the email section. And then the API section, there's not really much here unless you um, want to uncheck the un REST API. But most of the time, we just leave that, that blank or don't do any settings there. And then the next one that you may see is like an integration tab. This one happens a lot if you're integrating your WooCommerce site and say with MailChimp or you're using you know some of the other plugins that are out there there'll be integration tabs so you can go in to log into your MailChimp account make sure that's all set up properly and then you can work from there so those are all the settings uh, that's taken like half the time just to get through the settings of some of the things so we're gonna go through the product now and then we'll show you some more things so any questions about settings did I miss anything is there anything that is just some things are boring yeah I spent 
147 hours looking for the stable commerce style checkbox. The disabled commerce styles checkbox. Maybe it's I don't know. Yeah. They move things quite often on us. Um, let's see. It might be under this area, under tools, under status and tools. Um, no. I don't know. I will have to look and see if I can find that. It's a very specific question. I was not prepared. <laughs> so we get to the products. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, you mentioned something about um, when you were demoing Stripe that it, it had a functionality where you could be to sort of test. Uh -huh. um, um, so you could test products. Um, if you were using PayPal or maybe Square or something, uh, how possible is it to set up in commerce where you're building products and testing each of your products before you're going to go live. Maybe you, you, you don't even have a Tesla cell set up. Is it possible? Yeah, that's a good question. So he's saying, well, how do we test, like if we want to test every single product before we even have the SSL certificate set up, like can we do that with those other gateways? Some of the gateways will let you and other ones won't. Like Square, for example, will not work, will not even show up unless you have an SSL certificate installed. Um, so it, it just really depends on the payment gateway. Most of the time, like I like to make sure the product like everything with the emails and all the transactional things are working perfectly with the check payments. And then you can go and do a couple transactions with Stripe or PayPal or whatever. For the most part, they're always, it's, it's not going to be any different. Like if two or three go through with Stripe and you've tested a hundred with the checks, like it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. Like it's not like some of them will work and some of them won't. As long as they go through with the checks, they're going to go through with Stripe as well. That's a good question. So when you get to the, the products area, this is a, um, if you've never created a product, they've got a little tutorial here that'll walk us through. Or there's also the ability to import products from a CSV file, which is super nice if you have your inventory somewhere and you've got 10,000 products and you've got all this stuff, like you can import things with a, from an Excel spreadsheet. Another the cool thing that you can do with the Excel spreadsheet or the, the CSV file or whatever is say you've set up your entire website, you know, you've got 15 products, say, and you want to... Um, you want to make edits to all of them. Maybe you wanted to put them all on sale for a while or you want to do something with them. You can export them out of WooCommerce. They're into a CSV file. You do all the edits. Then you upload that information back up and it will overwrite the new data on the current products. So that's really nice. And, yeah? So the, so the question is, what about uploading photos? So this is a, probably a, a little bit of a sticking point, but how you can do this, there's two ways. You can first upload all of the media, the, the photos to the library itself, and then take those URLs and put them in your spreadsheet. Or you can have them all like on a public Dropbox folder and put those links in the, in the CSV file. And then if they're not located on your site, as part of the import process, it's going to go grab them from wherever they are, upload them to the media library, and then, then link it to the correct thing inside WooCommerce. So it's pretty, pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and create our first product. Creating a product, as you see here, is... Okay, we do not need all the steps here. But as you can see, it looks very much like creating a post, creating a page, creating like most things that are on our WordPress site. That's, that's what it's all about. What we're going to do is we're going to sell orange shoes because I like orange and I like shoes and I'm wearing orange shoes. And we can say like um, cool things about my orange shoes. It's just some gibberish text here just to kind of show you what happens. But here's where the... This is, this is what makes it WooCommerce. This is where the money is with WooCommerce. And if you don't put a price on a product, it's not going to show an add to cart button on your site. So if you ever run into that, why can't I put it in my cart? It's because there's no price. If you want it to be free, you can put zero in the price point. And that's what you're going to do. So we're going to say my fancy new shoes are $100. I can put them on sale if I want to. This is kind of cool. It uses the, the power of uh, WordPress and the schedulability of things. But we can say, like, if you wanted to set up your store for Black Friday, you can say, like, on, on fr that whatever that Friday's date is through the Monday or whatever, you can say, this is, the, this is my Black Friday sale. I can set it up. I can forget it. And I can say what the new price 
price is when it's on sale. If you don't want to schedule the sale, you can just say a sale price of $90 and then WooCommerce will say it'll put $90 as the real price and it'll do a strikeout through the $100 line item. So you can do that as well. Here's the boxes where you can say where the tax status is, whether it's taxable or no tax or shipping only tax. And then if you wanted to say if you were in the crazy state of New York and say like this was clothing and it's going to be a different higher tax bracket or whatever, you can say you can specify right here what type of shipping uh, or what kind of tax class it's going to be in. Then you go down to inventory. If you only have one set of these shoes, you can put that in. Um, if you can do manage stock and whatnot. This is where the, the SKU number, so we talked about all the importing of things. Importing really, it really looks at the, the SKU number and the title. So if you really want to make sure that you can import and export and all that good stuff, make sure you have some sort of SKU number there. That's going to be one of the driving factors to make sure that the product is unique. Um, it also looks at the, the post ID number, so um, there's plenty of ways for WooCommerce to know what product is what, so it doesn't overwrite the wrong product. So we can say our, our SKU number is, maybe we should call it like orange, one, two, three. Orange is my favorite color, and so I'll reference that several times. We'll say a quantity of one. Uh, you can do back orders, so if you want people to be able to buy, even though they're on back order, you can enable that as well. And then if you wanted to only limit people to buying one pair of orange shoes at a time, you can say sold individually, and they can only buy one of whatever that product is. Then with shipping, um, in order for shipping most of the time to work right, you have to say what the size and the dimension is. This is where we get a lot of people that say, well, my shipping calculations aren't working right. What's going on? And it's because the product doesn't have a, a weight and it needs a length, width, and height in order for calculations to work. If you're only offering free shipping or if you're doing flat rate shipping, you don't necessarily need to add this information. But when you're setting up your site, like just go ahead and do it because someday you're going to have a thousand products and you're going to say, oh, well, now I have to go back and add all these. Like it's going to be a pain to do it later. So if you can take 10 seconds to measure your box and weigh it, then that's good. So we'll say these are super light shoes. We'll say they're 0.2 weight. And this is and this is this is important. Like this is the weight and the dimensions of the actual thing that's going in the box. So if it's like I'm not going to take my shoe and measure like the size of my shoe. I'm going to measure the size of the box. And if I'm selling um, if I'm selling something like some sort of perishable good and I'm shipping it on dry ice like you have to include the dry ice weight either in the packaging or in the product itself. So you have to kind of make those calculations as well. So it's not super, super easy, but it's, it's possible and doable. And another thing you can do is you can set things by shipping classes. I know that I'm just like pouting off like more information than you'll ever want to know. But shipping classes gives you the ability to like manage the way that things are shipped. So maybe you have like stickers. Stickers can ship free. All going to throw into an envelope or put into a package that's already being shipped. But then sometimes you may have like something that's gigantic and it weighs 50 pounds and it has to be shipped via freight or something else. So you can set up all these shipping classes to say like if it's in this shipping class, it's going to go freight. If it's in this, it's going to go by envelope if it's, you know, whatever. So you have tons of options. The easiest way is to set up and just put them all in the same shipping class, figure out what's going to happen when you actually start shipping. Sometimes you're going to lose a little money on shipping. Sometimes you'll probably gain a little money on shipping depending on what size box it goes in. If WooCommerce calculates a bigger box, then the customer will pay a little bit more for shipping than it actually costs. But then other times, you know, it's, it's going to work out in the end. You'll be very, very close. Um, the linked product area is the next part of setting up a product. And this allows you to do upsells and cross sells. So upsells are, um, I think cross sells are the ones that go across the bottom. So it says like, oh, you, you like orange shoes, maybe you'll like an orange jacket and you'll like an orange vest and you'll like an orange this. But upsells are the ones that you see on the cart page, like you're almost ready to check out and it's like, oh, well you might like this and you might like this and you might like that. So if you had other products set up, you can just start typing like it says three or more characters and then it'll go through and look at all your products and you can add that specifically to those areas. So that's a kind of a way for you to market yourself or you know, promote your other products across your store. Um, attributes are set up for in case you have like these are really good for um, product variations. And what a product variation is is like T-shirts is a great example. Like you have one fit, one actual product like this WooCommerce T-shirt. There's one of those, but maybe I offer those in purple, in orange, and small, medium, large, and extra large. Like you don't want to just have to set up how many products is that. And if you offer them in men's and women's sizes, that's like 18 products you have to set up. Well, with a, a product variation, that is, which is another, a, another subset of products, what that allows you to do is say, I have this t-shirt, 
this is the design, and then you can say a variation is a purple men's small, a purple uh, women's small, an orange men's small. You know, like all of those, you set all of those variations up. And then with each variation, you have different sets of colors, like you can put actual pictures. Like you can see how this can get very complicated very, very quickly, um, especially if you're selling lots of things, or lots of products. If, if you're doing a variable product, like, um, like the example of the t-shirts, and you're doing a lot of them, probably the best thing to do would be to create one product export it, see what that looks like in a CSV file, in, that, um, in that, that file, make a bunch of edits and add a bunch of other products to that CSV file, then upload them back in. And then that way you don't have to go through. It's, it's a little bit cumbersome to go through because you have to set the price for every variation. You have to do like all kinds of things for each separate variation. So that's that, and then we've got the, if there's any purchase notes that you want to give the, the purchaser, you can put those there. If you want to put them in the menu, if you want to enable reviews, you can do that as well. If you want to set the product image, you just click the, I did that kind of quick, but there is the product image uh, button right here. This works kind of like the featured image in WordPress, and it's kind of using the same type of technology, I guess. I mean, it's, it's WordPress or whatever, but um, if we wanted to add the orange shoes like I'm wearing, we can add those just like so, and we set that as the product image. And then we publish. Um, we can always come back and fix and change, but let's go ahead and see what that looks like when we, when we do that. So we can see that that's what it looks like because I uploaded a rectangular image and my theme is calling for a square image, you were missing part of the shoe. So that's a, an issue. So that means I either have to resize the dimension of the product that I've uploaded and make that a square image, you know, make it have more white on the top and bottom, or I have to um, resize and do some configuration with my theme to get it to look right. So that's another step of the process. More and more steps. It has this cool zoom feature so you can see how awesome they are, especially in orange. Um, but then if we go to, um, it's not funny, I like orange. Um, if we go to that shop page, this is going to show like all the products that we have in our store. So this would be like kind of the landing page for our store. So if I had more products, if I, if I would have thought ahead and had a CSV file with a bunch of stuff, I could have uploaded them all and then we could see all the products right here. Um, we'll just add to cart to show you what this whole experience looks like. So that add to cart, that was the Ajax response right there. I don't know if you saw it or missed it, but I clicked the add to cart and all of a sudden it shows me this button that says view cart. And so I can click on the view cart and now I see the view cart. It goes through the, like I can add a coupon code if I had set up coupons. I'll show you where that is in just a second. And then here's the button where it does calculate shipping. So remember I set up the, I set up the shipping zone for Ohio only. It was for Ohio and the five, four states around it. And so if I go in and I put New Mexico, what's the zip code here again? Seven, eight? 87102. 87102. And we do an update. It's gonna say there's no shipping methods available because we didn't set any shipping methods up for that we only did the ones in Ohio. So if we do Ohio, there are no shipping methods available in Ohio either. Because I didn't save it. I know, I know. That's why I'm going back. When you are, when you are setting up WooCommerce sites, you will get to know different... Here. It's right there. Oh, I see why. This was another problem that happens a lot with WooCommerce sites. I'm glad that I did this. I'm glad I messed up so I can show you how to fix it. Save a lot of support costs. Yes, this is going to save all my support requests. Um, so the way the WooCommerce shipping works is it comes to this page. WooCommerce is smart. It comes to this page and it's like, okay, I'm going to look for the first zone that meets the criteria for New Mexico. All right, so it goes in and it looks at the top of the list and it's like, oh, United States. New Mexico is in the United States. I am gonna look there. And it says there's no shipping methods offered in that zone. Okay, that makes sense. We didn't set anything up for, for all of the United States. We didn't set anything up specifically for New Mexico. That makes sense. All right, now, Ohio. Let's go at the top of the list. Oh, Ohio is in the United States. There's no shipping methods. You have to have the most specific shipping region at the top. So if I wanted the 87102 as a specific region, that one has to be very top because it works top to bottom. As soon as it matches one, it's going to display every rate that's here. I've seen people, this, this is another support request, happens all the time. They have United States, then they have United States free. They're like, why doesn't the free shipping ever trigger? 
Well, because it's never going to trigger because it's always going to hit United States at the top first. So that's the reason. So that's why I made the mistake purposely. I made the mistake. <laughs> So if you do have this problem, you run into this issue, you see the little, I don't know what they call them. They, if they're a menu, it's called a hamburger menu. If it's a drag and drop thing, I don't know what, if there's even a name for it. But you just click and you drag. Um, and now we can go back and we can refresh. And it's going to say, here's my shipping options. So that is that. So now we have shipping. And then you proceed to check out. And you can see what the checkout page looks like. This is where you kind of walk through the process, make sure everything looks good, works right. And then since we have the check payments, that's the only option that we have, then we can go ahead and place the order. It does pre-populate some of this information based on uh, if you're logged in. Like this is another really confusing thing. Like if you're logged into your website and you've, the last time you're on your site, you specify that you, you know, your zip code in Ohio, then the next time you come to the site, you're going to see like the shipping rate for the zip code in Ohio. Like it automatically knows who you are and what you're doing. So that's a kind of a confusing piece. Um, if you, most of the time you can do the incognito window, just open it up or another browser, don't log in and you can see, you know, make sure that everything's working properly. So that is that. Um, try to think if there's anything else. Let's, let's, by chance, let's turn these, this is, this would be another product that you could turn into a variable product. This is kind of silly to sell shoes by a simple product and you can just like buy this shoe because it could be any size, right? Um, so we want to say that we have a few different sizes of shoes available. So you can change a product from a simple product. You can do group products so that this is all what's built into WooCommerce is group products have the ability to like say you buy this product and you get this product at the same time or these two products are grouped so you have to buy them both at the same time. Um, you can do an external link to an affiliate product. So this is pretty cool. So if you wanted to promote, like you're selling all these things in your own store, but you have all these affiliate relationships, you can set it up so it looks like a shop, but when they click the button, it opens up in a new link and it's your affiliate link to, you know, whatever product it is. So then it looks like it's in your store or whatnot. Then if you want to change it to variable product, if you have um, WooCommerce um, memberships or WooCommerce bookings or subscriptions or any types of like extra things that you want to sell or F different extensions, then you would see all of those options here as well. But if we go into variable product, we'll see these things called attributes. And you're going to have to add a custom product attribute. And so we're going to say like sizes because we're going to sell different sizes of shoes. So we'll say eight and then you have to separate these by the little pipe thing. 10, 11, and 12. We have to say that they were used for variations and then we save that attribute. And then we come to this other page and we say create variations from all attributes. It's the weirdest thing. I have no idea, but this is just how you do it. So it adds five new variations. Okay. So the eight, nine, 10, and 11. And if we save this, we can go over and we can look at it. We'll go, we'll go back. We'll go back to the shop. Uh oh, orange shoe can no longer be purchased. Hmm. I didn't buy it. I changed the product type and so it's telling me that. So now you see that we're looking at this product and now it says read more. This used to say add to cart. Why is that? Because you can't, this is a variable product. You have to pick which variation that you want. So you have to say, oh, I'm going to go to this page and now I'm going to select an option. Like what size of shoe do I want? The text of that button? You can. It would change site wide if you change the text. So the read more, you can say, you can change it to whatever. So anytime it would be the read, instead of saying read more, it would say whatever. Like you could do those customizations. But then would it show up in the rest of the WordPress installation elsewhere? Uh, probably not, just in the WooCommerce part. So now it says, the, what? Uh, still looking for a lot of right, that's something that has to be, that, uh, that isn't changeable through the WordPress dashboard, but with a line of code to, to do a filter. You'd have to okay. filter the text. Yeah, I need to talk to you about that. Okay, we'll find it. Okay, so I created the product, I saved it, I've got five variations now, but now it says it's unavailable. Any ideas why? No stock. No stock? Good, good guess. Anything else? Any, any other wagers? 
No, I don't think it's, it's due to that. Let's see, we've got inventory, we've got a stock quantity there. Um, we can turn off the, the stock here, let's see if that's it. So we have unlimited orange shoes. Oops. No, okay. This product's not available. What? I just took that off. I just changed the inventory to man. I'm not managing stock anymore. Nope, I just took that all off. I took all the managing stock off. So then that's not going to be the issue. Yes. I don't know who said it. You were listening. You have to set the price per variation. Variation price. <laughs> just sold. I just saved another support ticket from 100 people. Yes. So you have to go in and do it. You know, you could go one by one. You could say they're $100. Or you can go up here. This is another thing that is so bonkers about WooCommerce that it's hard to see. And I don't know why, but you, at the top here, you can say what the default value is. So if you wanted people to come and when they land on the page, like it automatically pre-selects 10 because most men have size 10. I don't know. You could do that if you wanted to. So then that's going to be pre-selected when they come to the cart. The other thing you can do here is this. This tab here, it's, it says add variation. But we, what we can do is here, we can set regular price. And we do set regular price and we hit go and we say the value is 100. And so we've just done that and we'll save that. So then we didn't have to do that five times and expand that box five times. If you, one of them was a different price, the regular price would apply to all of the, the other four and then you could set a specific price for the It would set all of them if there's one of them has a different price, you know, like if you're selling an XXL t-shirt or something that's $2 more or whatever, then you would do a set all price to be $10, then you would go in and edit that one variation for $12 or whatever. So instead of going like the other process is doing this, and you're clicking the down button, then you're scrolling and adding the price, you're updating the inventory, yada, 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 then you're gonna do this one, and you're gonna do the next one, and, pre and hope not to hit the remove button when, in the whole process while you're doing it. So that's how you set up a product variation. So that's, I, I only have five minutes left, but I have about five more hours of content, so I don't know how that's gonna work. Um, there's, there's Tons to do with WooCommerce. Probably the biggest, the biggest thing is like, first kind of map out what your plans are for your store. If you're thinking about a store, like what kind of products, like it's always great to start with one product, start with two products, start with something small, start with something that is a reasonable shipping. Like you don't have to go in and try to configure USPS shipping so you get these live dynamic rates and try to figure out what, you know, just say $5 shipping, like whatever. Like if you're starting to sell a product, like you are gonna make some money, you're gonna lose some money on shipping. But it's going to, you're going to get the learning experience there. Um, the, the stores like that sell hundreds of thousands of dollars a day worth of stuff, like those are the ones that are really tweaking all the settings, like getting the most performance out of their websites. They're making sure that pages are cached and not cached and they're doing a lot of like really intense things. But as a, a store that's just getting started, people are, you know, you're driving traffic to your store, like get them to those pages. Use what Mark was saying about the um, Google Analytics. Like you can see what pages people are looking at. And like you can set up these, um, you can set it all up so you can say like, oh, if they come to this site and if they don't hit the add to cart button, that's a failed conversion or these ones are good conversions. And like you can do all kinds of stuff. You can set up your store in all kinds of different ways. Um, let's just go to um, WooCommerce.com um, real quick. I'll show you some of the extensions that we have. Like um, you can... There's tons of them there. And we have a couple bundles that are happening right now that basically take like five or six premium extensions, bundle them all into one thing, and then give you a really good discount on them. So if you wanted to sell, if you want to have a membership site, that's a good example. There's a bundle that includes memberships and subscriptions and a few other miscellaneous plugins. But that will allow you to turn your website, say you want to have like, I'm going to produce this type of content, or I'm going to teach people how to do copywriting, or I'm going to teach people how to do whatever. And then they have to have a membership to my site. They pay $15 per month. You have the subscriptions plugin, which manages um, all the payments. So every month their credit card gets charged. And then you have the memberships payment or the memberships plugin that allows you to um, 
restrict certain content on your website to people that are paying, like you can do all kinds of things with WooCommerce, which is pretty awesome. But here's a list of all the things, like if you go to WooCommerce.com and click on the extension store, there are literally hundreds of things in there. You can integrate with Zapier, so if something happens on your store, you can kick off some sort of integration to your, uh, you know, G Google Docs account or whatever, like you can do fulfilled by Amazon through your store, like there is a literally, a th not a thousand, but 300, 400 plugins to do specific things. So if you're coming up with a, you know, you're coming into a problem like with anything with WordPress, like if we come up to something that we don't have the functionality for in our website, what do we do? We look for a plugin. Like we look for a plugin to do X for our WordPress site. We look for a plugin to do X for, you know, whatever. But if it's in WooCommerce, like the best place, the first place to go is go to the WooCommerce like extension store and see what's out there. Like these, these are some premium plugins. Some of them, like this one, this one um, Woo members bundle is like $300. But you're getting like so much value in the fact that we have developers that have put hundreds of hours into these plugins. Like, and the big thing is like I know the the WordPress community is on the frugal end of things. You know, they want everything for nothing, and that's how I am too. Like, I don't like paying for things. But if you're running a store, your goal is to make money. If you can if you can sell five products or ten products or. 15 products, you know, whatever the number is based on what you're selling, to pay for, you know, a $300 plugin. Like, say you have, um, for $300, you have a $10 a month plan or a $30 a month membership site. You need 10 people to buy that per year to recoup your costs. So if you buy an extension too, you get live chat from WooCommerce um, and people like me are sitting behind the computer in Ohio, like trying to answer every question that um, you guys throw at us. So that's my spiel, I guess, that's WooCommerce in a one hour time block. Um, if Sam was in here, I would tell him to, he should have gave me three hours, but um, that's probably all you need to know right now. If you have any questions, I'll be here the rest of the day and part of the day tomorrow. So that's it. <laughs>